G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we're gonna show you how to catch this and turn it into this. Okay guys, so the spot where we dove to catch our bait, it's actually quite a challenging spot. It's a really tight passage and has like four or five knots of current uh, at the time where we were diving at, which not only makes it challenging from the current, but from a visibility point of view as well. Um, and it's also a very sharky place. Uh, so Sam's dove down here, found a nice little spot out of the current, um, making a few little scratching sounds on some of the dead coral there um, and manages to bring out a couple of one spot snapper they come to see what's going on so he lines one up takes the shot uh, and blows the spear straight through it so as soon as sam has shot that fish it's just turned around and scooted straight back in, in into a hole in the reef uh, so sam's gone to the surface to uh to, to get a decent breath um, to be able to go back down and get that fish from being stuck from under the reef but on his first dive down, as you can see, extremely sharky. Uh, quite a few different brands of shark there. And the second you take your eyes off the shark, um, that courage goes through the roof and they'll come right up to you and potentially even grab a bite. So for Sam to turn around to the reef and try and get that snapper out of the reef um, would be a crazy move. So he goes back up to the surface um, and calls out to me, who I was just down the passage slightly, uh, my own little ambush spot. Um, so he called for some backup and uh, I came over to, to help him get that snapper out of the reef. So as you can see when he dives down here, um, I'm diving down just behind him. So I'm probably two meters behind him um, and the sharks are well and truly keeping their distance. Um, and so why, while he is fosking around in the reef um, to untangle the fish and, and get his catch, um, I'm keeping my eyeballs on the sharks and that's a big thing as well. The sharks, if they can see your eyes, um, they'll usually keep that distance as well. So Sam does some of his best work there, getting the fish untangled, securing his catch, um, getting back up to the surface and we have our bait. So whenever you're diving with sharks, or whenever you're diving in general, but even more importantly with sharks, make sure there's at least two of you. The more of you that there are, the more intimidating you are from a shark perspective and they'll keep that distance. <laughs> that was the most mangled one spot. <laughs> oh, fish. Okay, so now that Sam has shown us how to hunt down and shoot the one spot and fight off the sharks, I'm gonna show you how we do turn this into that mud crab. So, like any bait, I like getting like big fleshy bits. So cut them up here. Through the backbone, bit of guts. big solid fleshy piece with some guts and if you guys could smell this <coughs> you'd be gagging <laughs> chuck it in the little bait bag now mud crab are so strong and vicious that you will probably see hopefully we get the mud crab and this is just going to be torn to shreds now what I do is I actually use cable ties So I cable tie the, the bait up. And then I cable tie the bait in the center to the bottom of the net. And that's it. 
then we are good to go. Now this particular type of net, what I do is I pull it tight to shut it up, put like a half hitch, and then you stretch this out to the edge and clip that on. And that's it. No muddies climb in here. So you usually only get one mud crab in each pot like this, especially if they're male, because they'll get in there and they'll be having a feed. And if, if it's a big one, the others aren't gonna come in there. Um, but yeah, let's go drop this in and try our luck. So we've just pulled into this nice little opening in the mangroves here. I like to sort of tuck it in a bit so it's a bit protected so I don't know if the crabs feel safe or what. But Sam's going to chuck that in there. So the main thing you want to remember when you're chucking crab pots down is you want to make sure they're sitting flat like that. They have to be sitting perfectly flat otherwise the crabs will just come from underneath and like feed on the bait. And then what we'll do is we'll tie this down super low so that nobody, oh, so that nobody sees it. Oh yeah. And so that hopefully that's still here when we get here. So it's low tide, dead low water right now. We'll let like a tide cycle go. So um, once it's high tide, we'll come back in. And hopefully as that tide starts running and pushing back salt water back up into the system, the crabs start to crawl. Um, you know, we left that bait for a day and a half, two days. So it's super smelly, which I think helps. I was just saying to Sam, this is why like he, he spear fishes and I use a lot of lures and do a bit of spear fishing as well so you don't have to deal with smelly bait <laughs> but uh, it's going to be worth it once we get this nice big muddy. Alright guys, so it is time to check the pots. A number of hours have passed. I'm not exactly sure how many hours, uh, roughly six or seven. And uh, Michael's just going out to retrieve the tinny. And then we're gonna see what we've got. What do you reckon? I'm, a, I'm really, really hopeful on this one. Don't ask me why, but I've just got a good feeling that we're gonna get a delicious mud crab from this one spot snapper. And uh, yeah, how awesome. We got some bait just up here just off the pontoon which is pretty cool let's do this conversion let's convert a one spot snapper into a mud crab all right michael what do you think Are i am on? i am reasonably confident we're gonna have a muddy in here i would say i'm a 85% chance for a mud crab. I like the odds. I like the odds. They're pretty good odds. You take them. Yeah, we'll definitely take 85%. What I'm going to do is kill that. Yep. And you can do the honours. So if there's no crab in there, it's probably your fault. Yeah, it's on me. Well, the first plus is that the crab oh, net is still there. We got, we got one there. crab. I just disturbed this little fella. Yeah, they love the white rope. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, oh. every, every time I tie them up, they're always on the white rope. There we go. Well, that counts. We've already got one. Oh, moment of truth. Hey, 
Bingo! Holy. We got one. We got two. We got two. One. Now, now, puppy, now that's a big crab. That's a big crab. We're going to watch Sam now put his hand in there and get the small one out. No, <laughs> no I'm joking, dude. <laughs> we'll undo the top because a crab like that will take your finger off the big one. So we want to get that little one out and let him grow or her grow. Hey, hey. He's got the other little crab out. It's actually a male, so I'm willing to bet that crab got in the pot first because if that big sucker was in there, I wouldn't think this guy would even come and have a sniff. He's a brave, brave boy. And he's gonna go back and Make lots of babies grow. and grow big. Yeah, enjoy. Cool. All right, let's get the boss home yep. and give these guys a better look at it. We have the wet mammal <laughs> representing all of humanity. And in the green corner, we've got old mate who's got a fair set of guns on him. All right, keep it clean, boys. All right, touch gloves. Let's go. <laughs> All right, how not to catch a mud crab? Ready? Oh, this is, you're giving it easy, bud. That was a walk in the park. Oh, yeah, it was <laughs> almost, almost. Have a look at those. Wow. Oof. Definitely do wow. not want to get chomped by that. So. Solid crab, that's your first ever muddy caught? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what a way to do it. Convert in a one spot into a muddy. Bloody it's awesome. So surreal, this thing's like a dinosaur. Look at those claws. Sick. So yeah, super excited to cook this guy up and yeah, turn into an excellent feast. What a crab, what a crab. Humanity one, crab zero. <laughs> Sick. All right, so we've got our mud crab and we need to make a fire because we're gonna cook him on a fire in seawater and it's gonna taste delicious. So while that crab's cooking, we actually did a little sniper trick today and I put one of my GoPros uh, cable tied it into the top of the crab pot. Um, so it was a risk, like <laughs> obviously crab, uh, the pot could get stolen, lost, shark, whatever. Um, but everything worked out well and to top it off, the actual crab crawled in to the pot uh, when we still had some battery. So check out this footage while the crab's cooking and we'll see you back at the fire. It's Alright guys, so we're all cooked up. She's nice and red, or he's nice and red, should I say. And um, yeah, we're good to go. So I'm definitely just gonna get stuck into the claws. Just crack that puppy off. And we we'll go again. Oh. Right. Get your old pliers. Juices everywhere. Maybe I went a bit tough on that. Holy. Guys, this is one of the meatiest claws I've ever seen on a crab. This is actually my first eaten, caught mud crab as well, so I'm super, super excited. Oh, look how juicy that is. I'm just gonna eat straight from here. Mm. 
That is unreal. The flavors, the juiciness, it is delicious. I wish I could share some of this with you guys, but um, yeah, what a feast. We're gonna actually share this into a pasta and eat it. What a cracking day, me and Michael went out and smashed the one spot snapper. We then converted it into the mud crab today with Michael's secret spot. And uh, yeah, what a crab, what a feast. It came out absolutely beautiful. For you new guys that haven't seen exactly how we cook the crab, um, if you click on to the link up in the top corner of this video, that's gonna take you through to one of my other videos where I'll take you through the whole process from start to finish of exactly how we do cook the crab. Um, but it's just been awesome fun actually making this video to go from beginning of hunting that one spot down, uh, you know, converting that into a crab, uh, cooking the crab, and then, you know, enjoying it here with, with Sam and Denver. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.